Ethiopia. A landlocked country is currently building a dam that has been 11 years in the making and will cost more than $5 billion when it's finished. Once finished, it will generate about 6,000 megawatts of electricity for domestic consumption and export. About 70% of people in Ethiopia currently live without electricity, and because of this, almost 70 million people live without meeting their basic needs. More than 60% of Ethiopia is dry land and unable to be used for groundwater, and without a coastline, Ethiopia has no sustaining water resources other than the Blue Nile. However, despite all of the positive progress that Ethiopia is making, conflict has risen with Egypt about the building of this dam. Why exactly is there so much controversy about a dam that would ensure better flow and water for the downstream countries like Egypt? After doing some research on this topic, I found that the main problem is rather political than technical. After revolutions of removing Hansi Mubarak and election of Mohamed Morsi to the Egyptian presidency, al-Sisi was sworn in as president of Egypt. He was a former director of military intelligence and former minister of defense. He was not elected as president, but rather sworn in on a coup. He also at the time didn't have much support from the people of Egypt because he was never elected by them. So how's the best way to gain support? You make a problem and you play the hero. He then found an opportunity on the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and painted it as a national security threat. Building the dam would benefit the downstream countries because it ensures sustainable water flow for Egypt and Sudan for things like farming and irrigation. Conversely, if Ethiopia were using the dam for irrigation rather than electricity, they would be severely cutting water flow to Sudan and Egypt, causing droughts and famine. However, this dam is being built to be used for hydropower. Rather than opposing the idea that would ultimately benefit Egyptians, Egypt should be promoting the idea that would help all parties involved in the long run. While Egypt worries that the filling of the dam might affect the water if filled too quickly, Ethiopia has stated that they would start filling the dam during the rainy season, which is when Egypt experiences the most floods and won't have to worry about not getting enough water. This could take up to four years, and if it's a dry season, they'd extend it up to seven years, giving plenty of time to ensure adequate water flow to Sudan and Egypt. A 1929 treaty states that Egypt can veto anything happening upstream in the Nile. However, this has been proven invalid because the treaty was drawn when Egypt was under British colony. Also, the fact that Ethiopia never was signed in this treaty, which means that even if it was valid, it would have not even applied to them. How would you feel if someone had told you you couldn't eat your own food without the permission of your neighbor, who hadn't contributed to getting your food? That's exactly the situation of Ethiopia. 86% of the water running down to Egypt and Sudan is contributed from Ethiopia. Egypt and Sudan have had their privilege of using the water for their own benefit with dams of their own for years, while Ethiopia has been suffering for years without being able to feed off of its own natural resources. Ethiopia has many times tried to reach a consensus, wanting to work out the issue. However, Egypt refuses to cooperate, even though many solutions have been brought up. William Davidson from the International Crisis Group says that the only way for Egypt to secure their water supply is to cooperate. Ethiopia has stated that they will continue building the dam no matter what. If Egypt cooperates, they could have more of a say in the building of the dam, which would ultimately leave them better off, rather than Ethiopia continuing to build without Egypt saying the matter. Politicizing this issue and not coming to an agreement could bring unnecessary conflict for both countries, especially with each of them saying that they are ready to get military involved if it comes to it. If a war were to come to light, war experts suggest that even though Egypt has a well-equipped military capability, strategically Ethiopia has the upper hand because of location. This making an even match could be a long and draining war for both sides. Ethiopia may not have to send an army if a war broke out. They could simply build a large irrigation system along the Nile tributaries, which would severely harm Egypt without even firing a single bullet. It's like they say, you never want to offend the person making your sandwich. However, with cooperation from Egypt, the dam could be beneficial to all countries involved. Sudan has even shifted sides after realizing the dam could do more good than harm. Al-Sisi needs to stop politicizing this issue for his short-term gain. This dam could be a long-term victory for the people of Egypt, Sudan, and the other downstream countries.